And now let's move on to our series that we're doing on air purifiers and lots and lots of learnings. Last week we learned from a doctor such incredible things about the myths and the kind of things that we don't understand about air pollution, about air purifiers and what it's doing to our health and what is it that these doctors are observing. We're taking this story forward because Sanjana traveled all the way to Singapore and Malaysia to find out more. She went deep into the headquarters and the R&D centers of Dyson to find out what they're doing. Now, you know, the biggest problem with air purifiers is there's no standardization. How do you really know that you're buying this air purifier and this can do this for your room versus this one? The specs sound pretty much the same. They all almost look the same. They all claim the same things. So this is an eye-opening story, including for me too. So let's find out from Sanjana. She seems to be breathing deep. So where is that, Sanjana? Is that Singapore or Malaysia? This Rajiv proves to you that I'm very much not in Delhi. I'm actually in Malaysia right now at the Malaysia Development Center for Dyson where it's possible to do this because it's slightly better than what it is right there. But I'm here to actually test and check out how Dyson puts their air purifiers to the test. Now there's no standard really to you know really test how efficient these air purifiers really are. So while they might be really good on paper, how do we know that they're really that efficient and they're doing a good job? Well, we're here to find out just that, what kind of tests does Dyson put their air purifiers to, to ensure that they're working in our homes. The time and need for air purifiers in our metro cities is now. With PM 2.5 levels reaching a dangerous 500 in Delhi, we asked a doctor about the myths around air pollution. Number one myth about the indoor air pollution is that we feel that if we are living tightly inside, the air we do not allow from the outside to come inside and therefore will remain safe. Keeping in indoors is going to keep us safe is a real myth, right? So that can prevent from outdoor pollution, but what about the indoor pollution where we are surrounded by those polluted material all around us? Secondly, it is not visible. That is one thing. And if it's something which is not visible, we believe it doesn't exist, but it does exist. So these are the two important aspects that we have to understand. We sure do need an air purifier for that indoor pollution. But how do we test if the air purifier is really doing a great job on all fronts? Well, we went from Singapore to the Dyson Malaysia Development Centre to check out all the various tests their air purifiers are put through to ensure they work at an optimal level even when the PM2.5 levels are peaking. The Dyson Malaysia Development Centre is a new facility that has over 22 labs. So what all does Dyson pass over before the air purifiers reach us? Let's step in and find out. Now our first stop inside the Dyson Labs is this room where they are testing the CADR of an air purifier or the clean air delivery rate of the air purifier. Now you would think this would be the cleanest room in all these labs right here where I can take a deep breath. But you're absolutely wrong because they are lighting cigarettes here to test how much clean air the Dyson air purifiers can give out despite all the cigarette smoke around it. Breathing Delhi Air post Diwali is like smoking more than 9 cigarettes a day. But in this room here, Dyson is testing if the clean air delivery rate of their air purifiers is smooth using cigarette smoke. So the smoke is let in, there's a blower to help the air circulate inside the room. The test takes 20 minutes to complete and the initial reading of the cigarette smoke is noted and then the clean air reading is noted. A similar test is also conducted in a bigger, almost real household room size. Like in regular households, the air purifier is placed in the corner of the room and there are sensors placed around the room to ensure the clean air delivery is around the entire room and not just around the air purifier. Here, Dyson uses a vaporized odorless oil and not cigarette smoke. It takes less than 5 hours for the Dyson Pure Hot Cool to clean the entire chamber. The Polar test is one of the most important ones in testing air purification efficiency. The Polar test is about making sure that the product um, is intelligent so that it can spot that there is pollution in the room and then the machine uses that intelligence to clean the room evenly um, and to a low level until it thinks that the room is clean. So that's what the polar test is doing, is, is checking to see how, um, if the machine can spot the pollution event and then how um, clean the air is after it has uh, the machine believes it has cleaned the room and how even that room is because we don't want to just be creating a small pocket of clean air around a purifier when you may be sat on the other side of the room. There are also things like electromagnetic interference that Dyson keeps a check on. 
this is an EMC lab where this big antenna releases around 10 volts per meter to test the functionality of the air purifier with the interference around since it is seen in households from microwaves, laptops and even TVs. Even the emission from the air purifier is tested so it doesn't cross permissible levels and affect operation of mobile phones and other gadgets in the house. The chamber of this lab is covered in ferrite and foam which absorbs unwanted signals from outside during the test. Now you would think that testing an air purifier is all about its filtration process and just how efficient it is. But Dyson does a lot more than just that. This room is an example. Well, I'm at the acoustics chamber at the Dyson lab where they test just how soundless their machines can be. So this air purifier in the center of the room, for example, ranges from about 30 decibels to about 50 decibels, depending on how fast it's turned on. There are about 10 mics around here in a hexagonal shape, which detect how much sound that these are actually producing. How does an air purifier sound? Well, Dyson wants to ensure its music to your ears by keeping it as low as possible. Inside this acoustic chamber, 10 mics are placed all around, which measure the sound power level and the directionality. The test standards conform to international standards and this one is IEC 60704. Without any product or anyone inside this chamber, it can be as quiet as 17 decibels. But now from there to a more noisy part of the development center. This is the mechanical test lab, where air purifiers are dropped, twisted and shaken up to test their durability and fittings. There is a vibration test too that subjects the machine from low shock to high shock to simulate the air purifiers travelling long distances to reach their final homes. There is also a sudden air arrest test to check the robustness of the joints. Not just air purifiers, the Dyson vacuum cleaners and other products also go through similar tests. So that was all the testing carried out right here in Malaysia but for something a little closer to home, Dyson has just announced their new study that was conducted across Delhi and the results are shocking. We'll bring that to you next week.